Hello and welcome, I'm your Codeman King. Super quick video just to tell you about something really cool. Unity recently published a really awesome shader sample set. This is really generally great. You've got 30 shaders examples for all kinds of effects. For example, there's one on how to do an angle mask. So a common use case is to play something like snow only on the top side. Or how to make some really smooth noise in a very efficient manner. You can learn how to dynamically generate some hexagons or some bricks. You can learn how to use parallax in order to give depth to your materials. Or learn how to make some cell shade lighting how to make some nice smoke particles, or how to do some really interesting, really awesome interior mapping shader. All of these effects, all of these are made in Shader Graph, so you can easily inspect to see how it all works. And all the graphs have all excellent notes explaining exactly how all of it works. I really love how all of this is explained and how this whole scene is set up. You can just walk around this scene and learn about various features, see how they look and learn how it all works under the hood. Now for me personally, I am not a graphics or shader expert, so I've already learned a few things by going through this sample. Shader Graph really is a truly magical tool. If you learn how to use it properly, you become capable of building so much awesome stuff. This is a really awesome sample. I'm very impressed with it. I definitely do hope they do more of these samples in the future for all kinds of tools, not just Shader Graph. Unity does listen to feedback, so if you appreciate these awesome free samples, definitely make your voice heard in forums. In order to install this sample, open up a project with Unity version 22 LTS or Unity 6. Then open up the Package Manager, find the Shader Graph package, click on the Samples tab, and install the feature examples. Now, if you don't see feature examples, if you don't see this, then make sure you have the latest 22 LTS version. For example, right now over here, I am using 22.3.24, or make sure you're using the latest Unity 6 version. Then inside, you can just go inside the folders, inside the scene folder, and here you've got three different scenes for the three different random pipelines. So in my case, I'm using URP, so I can just open up this one. And yep, here it is. So again, here are all the examples, all of them perfectly annotated. Now they are split into 10 categories. So there's one showing how to do all kinds of blending masks. There's one for how to do custom interpolation, one for how to do detail mapping, how to do procedural patterns, how to do UV projection, how to do some more UV projection, how to do vertex animation, how to handle particles, use conditions to make branches, and how to do some custom lighting. This project also has this really nice custom editor window. You can see over here on the drop down menu all of the various samples and you can select any of them and it automatically moves the camera to that object. So for example, let's begin by inspecting one of the simplest ones. So for example, over here is the animated flag one. This one uses a shader in order to make this little wind animation on this flag. So we can first of all read this nice tutorial to see how it works. So this example shows a simple method for making a flag that ripples in the wind and the effect really centers around the sign note, which is what creates the rippling motion. So on the example, let's have a nice little mini tutorial over here. And then we can inspect the shader itself. So there's a nice button, open the example shader. And yep, here it is. Here is the animated flag shader. Again, all of it beautifully arranged, all of it looking really nice, really neat. Also including a bunch of groups and a bunch of comments. By the way, if you know nothing about Shader Graph, you can watch my basics video on it. Essentially, this is a tool that lets you create shaders by using visual nodes instead of having to write code. So the way this animated flag works is basically by taking the position of the object, then the split node, which takes the output position, so this is a vector 3, takes it and just grabs the R and the G, which in this case, it really means the X and the Y. It keeps those statics and really only modifies the Z. And the way it modifies that one is over here, like it says, using the sine wave. So this is something that's constantly bouncing between 0 and 1. So using that and using a flag movement mask in order to make sure that it doesn't actually move the part that is connected to the flagpole and only moves the part that is further away. So it used that mask, used the sine wave, recalculates the normals, puts it all in the position, and yep, in the final result, the flag does wave with the wind. Or you can learn how to make an angle mask. So this one, like it says here, the angle mask uses the direction that a surface is facing in order to determine if the mask should be black or white. If it is pointing in the direction of the given input vector, then the mask is white. If it's pointing away, the mask is black. And using that in some multiplication with the texture, this is how you can have this. So basically, if we rotate this object, then no matter what is the orientation, the snow is always just on top. Then there's this one about UV interpolation. I did not notice, but apparently tiling and offsetting UVs can become quite costly, especially when scrolling UVs on a fairly large object. So apparently if you need to do some kind of scrolling to do some kind of interesting animations, if so, instead of using the usual tiling and offset node, instead of that, apparently you can scroll them in the vertex stage. And in doing so, the visual result is literally exactly the same. So by toggling and untoggling this checkbox, I'll literally see no difference. But apparently if you untoggle it, if you do it in the vertex stage, apparently that is much more efficient. Or learn how to do parallax mapping. These are basically many techniques that attempt to add more detail to the shape of a surface than it's actually represented in the geometry on the surface. So basically this one over here, this is just a flat cube. So there's no actual geometry over there giving depth. 
but if we look at it from the angle, we can see it doesn't look like it has some depth. Again, this is all just shader trickery, so it makes it super fast. This one also has three techniques, so we can actually just go into the inspector and select to use the normal only. And yep, that's what it looks like. Use parallax or use parallax occlusion. So modifying all of those and yep, they yield different results. Or the really complex effect that everyone always loves, interior cube mapping. This is the one that was widely used in the game Spider-Man and people thought that it was pretty much magic. This is a really awesome way to add some depth to your models, again, without including any custom geometry. So look at how all those buildings, all those rooms, they look like they have actual geometry. However, in reality, they don't. This is really just a really nice shader trick. And of course, if you want to learn, just open up the example shader. So here it is, a lot of things. So something with exteriors, interiors, talking about interior cube mapping, using a Fresnel and so on. And there's another shader graph over here inside, so double click. And up here is a really complex shader doing all kinds of things. Now really, don't ask me to explain this. Like I said, I am not a shader expert, so I would really need to spend some time inspecting this sample, taking it all apart one by one, piece by piece, in order to really understand how all of this works, which is exactly what you can do by yourself if you want to learn how to build something like this. Then the shader graph is essentially the source code, so you can just browse through this and learn how it all works. So definitely go ahead and download this awesome free sample to learn how all of these awesome effects work. And like I said, Unity doesn't listen to feedback. I know some people don't think that's the case, and in terms of leadership, then yeah, sometimes that might be the case, especially before. But I do know that the people that work on these samples and tools, these people really do listen to your feedback. So if you want them to do more samples kind of like this one, definitely go ahead and tell them in the forms. Then go download the sample and learn how all of it works. Also, just another quick mention on this video, I'm currently editing the free C Sharp Intermediate course video. Stay tuned for that one coming out on Monday. All right, hope that's useful. Check out these videos to learn some more. Thanks to these awesome Patreon supporters for making these videos possible. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.